Hello everybody, today we're going to take a look at Red Hat Ansible Tower and how it can control Windows. Now, a lot of people have heard of Ansible Tower. Ansible Tower uh, is, has a great facility in the Linux world. People know Red Hat as a Linux company. They think, oh, it's only a, Red, only a Linux thing. Uh, nothing could be farther from the truth. In fact, Ansible is great for working with Linux, whether it's Red Hat Linux or any of the other varieties out there. It's also great for working with Unix. It's fantastic when working with network devices, uh, you know, Cisco, F5, so forth. Uh, there's a whole big area that can be explored there. But today we're going to talk about Ansible and Windows. And uh, we've got a simple demonstration for you on how this works. Right now you're taking a look at the Ansible Tower dashboard. Uh, Ansible Tower, for folks who don't know, uh, provides a few things that the normal Ansible engine, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, uh, does not provide. It provides first off a, a web-based GUI, which you were seeing right here. It also provides a programming interface, an API, RESTful API, uh, that can be used to integrate Ansible into your existing workflows if you already have some. Uh, so if you have a front end like Remedy or ServiceNow and you want to be able to tie the ticketing system into something that actually does the work once the ticket, ticket is issued and approved, uh, that's easily done. Uh, one thing that I will say particularly is that Ansible is not rip and replace technology. If you've ever received uh, from perhaps from management inside some job, they say, oh, here's the new tool. You're going to use the new tool. Now take everything that you've done, throw it away, and redo it all in this tool. That is not the way Ansible works. Ansible has a think for, a start small, think big uh, concept to it. So we're just going to start with doing the things that need to be done, and we will fit it in together. We will integrate with other technologies that you already have on site. So let's take a look at the templates that we have for today. Uh, we've got, uh, now a template is just a, a process that is defined by a playbook on a certain inventory of machines. And uh, we can see we've got three here. We have uh, install IAS, the Windows web server. On a Windows box, we have a deinstall. And then we're going to also show the use of PowerShell. Now, it's, pretty straightforward here. Let me bring up the install uh, playbook. Now a playbook, unlike a script, a script is more or less programming, right? Because it's saying, if this, do that. If it's not true, then do this, but then do this, etc., etc. It can get very complicated uh, when you have a script. A playbook, on the other hand, is simply a description of the desired end result. So basically, you know, you may need to have a programming background to do a script well, but all you need to do a, to write a playbook is basically the skills that you would use to fill in a configuration file. That's it, because you're just describing end state. Now here is the install IAS uh, playbook. Now it's in, you see .yml, it's using YAML. Uh, which is uh, uh, YAML ain't a market markup markup language. Uh, other people say it should be that uh, YAML is another markup language. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, the bottom line is that this is a standard uh, markup language. We didn't reinvent the wheel here. But we're seeing this YAML file, and we can see right away, even if you've never seen a playbook before in your, in your life, you can see this is going to install the IIS web service. And these are the tasks. We're going to install the actual IAS package. We're going to turn on the web service associated with it, and then we're actually going to create the default web page called index.html. So that's basically it. And you can see here that, that we have divided this up into three tasks, as we just saw. And under each of these tasks, we see something like this. This is called a module. Uh, in this case, the first module is win feature. And when feature takes a series of arguments, and all of these are documented out on the web, docs.ansible.com. They're also uh, documented on the machine you're running from. 
So if you're in a disconnected environment, you don't have internet access, uh, you can use the equivalent of like a man page or a, a help command um, on the actual Ansible machine to get this information as to what to put in where. But here we have the win feature module is going to is going to take the package called web server and we're going to make sure that it is present on the target machine. And then we're going to to start the service by using a module called win service. We give it the name of the the service which Windows uses and we want to make sure that that service is in fact started. And then we're going to create a web uh, default web page using a module called win copy. We're actually creating the content that's going into that web page right here, and then we're going to copy it into this destination on the target machine. And that's basically it. So now let's flip back over to the tower, and let's actually install this. Now we're just going to hit the little rocket ship and make it go. Now, if you you may have noticed on that. Uh, playbook down here when we're creating the content we actually use it's a little off the screen at the moment we actually use a variable and so what we can do is prompt for that variable up front using a thing called a survey and in this case we're going to select a message to appear on the default web page so we're going to get rid of the default and we're going to say this is my message we'll hit the next button It'll ask us to verify that this is in fact what we want to do, and we hit the launch. Now, the process has begun, and uh, Ansible Tower is now feeding this out through the engine to get work done. And here we see the actual run as it happens. So on the right-hand side here, we see the tasks beginning to execute. We see that we are up to the point of doing that install IAS task. Now, this will take about 30 seconds or so. And on the left-hand side, while we're looking at that, we can see all sorts of things, the, the status, the start time. Uh, we can see what's, what uh, user did this. I'm using a, uh, an environment that we use for, for running workshops, so I'm in student one. We can see what machines are being used, the, uh, the Ansible workshop inventory, and so forth. So all this detail is here. And what's more, all of this is captured every time you do the run. So, so basically, if you give a task to the night operator to do something, you don't have to worry in the morning, did they do it? Did it, did it happen correctly? Were there errors? You can actually go back and look at the logs. All of this information is stored. Now we can see that we now have a successful status, so it has been done. We have a start time and a finish time. Now we can come over here and we can actually look at the output of the playbook. Now you may notice here, if, uh, if you're not colorblind, that we've got this gold uh, changed uh, line, and this is associated with the IAS task. So basically we had to do something. We had to install the software. The software wasn't there. So it said, yeah, I had to change something, but everything's good. And then we look at the second task, which was to install the actual, or to turn on the IAS service. And we see likewise, I guess I had to turn that on. So it's something changed, but all is good. And then we created the web page, And likewise, it had to create the web page. And down here, we have a summary saying, yeah, we had to change three things, but everything is fine. We have no failures. So all is good. So we have installed the web page. Let's take a look over here. I'm going to flip up to, uh, this is the, what the page looked like before we did the install because it wasn't there. And now, lo and behold, our site is alive. And there's what I typed in, this is my message. So I created that web page. So now that website is actually installed. It is alive. It is working. Now let's go back to the templates. Now let's say for a second, um, Someone says, well, you know, this automation stuff, can't things get bollocked up? You know, what happens if an operator uh, does their work at the start of the shift and then they do, they forget and they do it again near the end of the shift? You know, isn't that going to mess things up? Well, one of the advantages of Ansible is that it is item potent. Now, there's like three different ways of saying that word. Uh, I'm just going to say it that way. That is that. It is looking toward an end result. So every time you run it, it's going towards the exact same result. So, so something that is 
that is created to say install a web service when if you were to do this again and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to launch this again and I'm going to give it a new web page uh, text and say uh, this is the new page text I click on that and I hit launch and now we're going to see this thing run again but we're going to see this is very different this time because last time nothing was installed so it had to uh, it had to create new things now you figure oh my you know if you create uh, install two web servers or something like this or it destroys the one that's out there that's a problem but that's not the way Ansible works because if you take a look here now we go to the install IIS task and suddenly it comes back with OK in green and that means oh wait a sec the web server software is in fact installed I don't need to do anything so it didn't actually do anything and then it comes down to start the service and he said well the service is already started so I don't need to do anything so it comes back once again green okay but then when it came down to the web page suddenly it's in changed and in gold well why is that well because I changed the web page the text on the web page so it had to create a new web page for me and it tells me yeah okay everything was just fine I only had to do one change there were no failures let's go back up to our little web page and see what it looks like there now so now is there's the new text this is the new page text so we now have seen that it works and that it was able to deal with the fact that many things that it was told to do it didn't need to do and it didn't make any mistakes it didn't bollocks things up now now that we've got it installed it's working let's take a look at deinstallation I'm going to flip back over here and bring up the deinstall playbook and we see this is this is a very simple playbook it only has two tasks we're going to deinstall the IAS web service so the first thing we're going to do is actually stop the service and then we're going to install deinstall the software so once again we're using the win service module that's the name of the service according to Windows and now we want that service to be stopped and then we're going to use the win feature module again and that's the name of the web package for IAS and we want it to be in the absent state so we want it to go away so let's go back over here and let's fire up the deinstall template and we see it beginning again and once again we've got all this detail over here and now it's beginning to run and we will see similar sorts of output before this should take perhaps about 30 seconds or so again for this to run on the target and so the first thing it did was to actually stop the web service and it said yeah I had something to do there I changed it and now it's in the process of actually deinstalling the software uh, once again all of this information as I said is stored within Ansible Tower so you have that accountability you have that uh, ability to uh, to audit what actually happened uh, particularly if you're in a government uh, situation or if you're in a financial situation where it's so important to know who did what when and how it turned out all this information is stored within the tower database and we see here it did do a deinstall it had to change something it had to remove it we see everything was okay it had to make a couple changes and that the status is successful and all this information is recorded so now let's go back up to that web page and try to refresh it now this is going to take a few seconds but as you notice it is not uh, it's not actually refreshing we see down on the bottom corner that it's still connecting that's because the web server is gone the service is not working and so in just a few seconds it's going to time out and give us a little message saying can't get there from here and that's exactly what we expected there we go the site can't be reached so let's go back into our templates and now let's just discuss for a moment PowerShell because it's pretty normal uh, for most Windows administrators to have some scripts that they normally run in PowerShell and we want to enable that capability so what what we're going to take a look at I've got a little playbook here now uh, full confession I'm not a PowerShell guy so actually I was learning enough just to do this so this is a really bogusly simple 
uh, PowerShell example. Uh, first, we're actually going to demonstrate a single line PowerShell by getting the date and time, and then we're going to execute a really stupidly simple PowerShell script. Um, and the script that we're going to execute uh, looks like this. It's just going to write the output saying, uh, this is my script execute. So we should get the date and time, and then we should get that text as well. So we're going to flip over and we're going to hit the little rocket ship and start the PowerShell template. And now we're going to watch this execute. Now, because this is just, uh, both of these commands are just pumping things out to the standard output, uh, I increase the verbosity on this and it can go up much higher than this, but basically we're just uh, we're just going to take a look at the full output, which is really useful when you're debugging and things. But in this case, I just want to see uh, some of the output. Now here, we notice there's a lot more detail here. I'm going to click on this. And now we can see the output that the verbosity brings on. We can see I executed this command, which should give us, give us the actual date. And here's the standard out. And we see that it gave us the date and the time. And that is correct. So. Uh, that's, that's what executed there. Now let's go down to executing the PowerShell script and take a look at the output there. And we see that uh, the script was executing and it output the text that I told it, this is my script executing. So that in fact worked. So all of that worked just fine. Now you might be saying, well, you know, that's fine. Those are bogusly simple examples. Um, well, uh, before I do that, let me take a look at this. Remember how I said that everything is stored? You notice here that I have some red dots with some green dots. Well, these are times when I was putting together the PowerShell script and basically I was mucking things up because I don't know PowerShell. So we can actually drill into this. We can see that these were failures. We can see the date and time and who did it. All of that is recorded, and then we can actually look at all the output as well. So we could actually use this to debug uh, the situation with the PowerShell. And that's true for any, any playbook, any template that we are launching. But uh, to the point, what happens if we want to do something more complicated than just some sort of simple PowerShell script? So I'm going to bring this window into view. And uh, this environment that we are looking at right now is actually a workshop environment that we use regularly so that we can show customers, uh, give them a hands-on experience using Ansible Tower within a Windows environment. And this particular playbook, this is a real playbook that actually installs uh, Active Directory and it configures it. And you can see some of the things that are going on here. I'm not going to go into detail. But we see that we can uh, install the services. Uh, we can reboot if necessary. Uh, we can do things like create a DNS domain. Uh, we wait for the Active Directory uh, web service port to come up, and then we ensure that the services are properly started. Uh, we can then you know, do other adjustments to the DNS records and so forth. And all of this are, are using modules that are, uh, that are designed to speak to Active Directory specifically. Uh, there are literally dozens and dozens of modules within Ansible which, uh, which address Windows specifically. There are, as I'm recording this, well north of 2,000 modules in total which can deal with Windows, they can deal with Linux, they can deal with Unix, they can deal with all sorts of network dev devices, and even um, even more older archaic devices, we have commands that allow you to just basically push a command in a particular syntax if that's the only way that you know how to do it. So it, Ansible is extensible, it's powerful, and it's simple. I hope that this gives you some idea of some of the capabilities uh, that we have using Ansible within, within a Windows environment, and hope this was beneficial.